As 2019 wraps up the end of a decade worth of incredible gear, we're gonna take one last trip down memory lane together and check out the top five pedals that shook the hell out of us this year. Let's do it. So coming in at number five, it's a tie. I'm sorry. I know I hate to include two pedals in one slot, but I could have easily made this a top 20 list. We had to trim it down. So it's the JHS Colorbox version 2 and the Empress Zoya. Let's start with the Colorbox. This is a welcomed update to a very beloved, but also misunderstood pedal. I've personally always really appreciated how the Colorbox bridges the gap between the guitar player and recording engineer. It absolutely has an impressive range from clean to fuzzed out guitar, but guys, this is an incredible sounding, stupidly affordable mic pre. Essentially taking sonic inspiration from a 70s Neve console. The version 2 allows you to run it at 9 volts instead of having a separate 18 volt adapter, no more of that popping sound in the switch, a deeper EQ section, and now we have XLR and quarter inch outs. I am beyond geeked about this pedal, and stay tuned because we're going to be featuring the color box in another video in the coming weeks. Number 5, part 2. The Empress Zoya, the everything pedal, holy f Upon release, the Zoya was immediately eye-catching with its colorful grid of buttons in place of knobs in a rabid user network that seems to be growing daily. The Zoya is essentially a modular synth within a pedal where you can build different effects and instruments from the ground up. It can be a standalone synthesizer, or if you plug a guitar into the Zoya, it can be your entire pedal board. This was a massive release for Empress this year. Coming in at number four, the Maris Hydra. Every time a new release comes out from this crew, I just quake with anticipation, and they always deliver every single time, and the same can be said about the Hydra. This is Maris's intelligent pitch shifter, or actually, it's three intelligent pitch shifters that have their own independent delay lines that can be manipulated to create exciting melodic and rhythmic patterns from just playing a single note. One of the coolest things about this pedal, though, is being able to trigger the pitch values with a MIDI keyboard. Number three, the Strymon Iridium. The rage around this pedal was inescapable, but man did Strymon bring it with this thing. Fender Vox and Marshall emulations measured with the most accurate caliber of impulse response technology to date. With an array of different cab combinations, room sizes, a headphone jack, stereo ins and outs, this thing already has and will definitely continue to become a guitar player's best friend for playing fly gigs or recording on the go. All right, we're getting down to it. Number two, the Revival Drive Compact from Origin FX. Now with all the innovative releases this year, you could possibly be wondering, how does an overdrive pedal make the number two spot? Well, for starters, and personally speaking, it's the best one I've ever played in my life. Upon getting it, I was able to get rid of half of my overdrive collection. But as a descendant of last year's dual overdrive behemoth, the Revival Drive, the compact version takes a more trimmed down and user-friendly approach by delivering on their promise of giving us true amp sonics and feel within a pedal. It's essentially the signal path of an amp, but with FETs in place of tubes. Much like the success of their Cali 76 family of pedals, the Revival Drive Compact is yet another living legend from Origin FX. While everyone was busy watching the blooper series that Chase Bliss and Knobs put together, out of nowhere the mood drops is somewhat of a surprise release. And there's some general confusion about is this a looper, how is this different from the blooper pedal coming out, and so on, but essentially the mood is a two-in-one ambient powerhouse. One side boasts a massive reverb, digital delay, and pitch shifter, while the other side has a granular micro looper. Combining the two sides into a myriad of ways is what makes the mood and its user experience so special. I personally try to think of the looper side as more of an expression controller that I can use to expand on what's happening with the time base side of the pedal. But for as experimental as the mood can get, it's also extremely capable of copying a fantastic delay, chorus, bit crusher, and so on. Months later, I find myself still finding new and exciting corners of this pedal and just continue to be blown away and inspired. All right, everyone, we made it. Top five pedals of 2019, done, it's over. 
I would say some honorable mentions. Um, Electro Harmonics released a couple cool pedals this year. The Attack Decay reissue. Um, also the Ram's Head Big Muff, massive. Uh, Earthquaker Devices Plumes is a great take on a Tube Screamer. Uh, the SY1 by Boss, great synth pedal. And as always, everyone, thanks so much for checking out this video. Thanks so much for supporting Vintage King. If there was a release that came out this year, it could be more pro audio related, could be a pedal release. I feel like the two worlds are merging more and more every day. Let us know what it was in the comments below. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.